Welcome to the buy list. This is episode 66. This is not financial advice. This is cardboard. It's Matt Coles. <laughs> I wasn't going to, I would never throw Matt Coles. Got to respect that. So, uh, Nate, what's been going on? How's your week in fab been? Great. I didn't do anything <laughs> yet again. Actually, I lied. I played my first four games of Classic Constructed since we did the Azalea video. Oh, okay. I did play the skirmish since we last recorded, I think, too. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> took a, took the old gal Lexi out for another test drive. Lexi. Um, dude, it's just just saying, can I have a card, please? Um, it's just, oh, it's so refreshing. I have card. You give me card now, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you went from, I've done nothing to actually wait. Hold on. I played a skirmish and won it. Okay. See, yeah. I see. I yeah. see. I've been playing, playing some Kano today too. Um, oh. I fully expect Kano to get a ban. Yeah. I don't Either think he gets player. to exist with the cards that they're releasing i think wildfire finally dies for the sins of yeah there's some cards that are just absolutely nuts we're gonna go through our favorite spoilers here in a bit um yeah. but uh yeah i don't think you're gonna talk about it but the the when they spoiled the common or the rare that was like if this if surge uh if this surges you gain two two resources i was like yeah okay come on now <laughs> like I'm like all right okay that's that's enough of that <laughs> that in combination with kindle is just like some yeah. of the most broken insane like it, basically i you don't even need wildfire anymore it's basically just kindle combo like yeah the kindle is giving gives you so much more reach it's absurd like you're like, oh, I'm going to put my, uh, oh, I got two cards in hand. Oh, no. And it's like, oh, I'll just wildfire or I'll just uh, Kindle, respond with ragamuffins. And then I'll Kano the wildfire off the top of my deck. And then, oh, Kindle resolves, draw a card. Oh, look at that. It's another blue. Oh, look at I've got 20 resources. It's like I literally have too many resources on like half my combo turns. And I'm like, what is That's crazy? What is happening here? Yeah. Um, yeah. But. Yeah, it will be interesting to see what happens there. Like, because we know I I might be on drugs, but I could have swore every set comes with a BNR like attached to it. It just never been utilized before. Because there was a time, I don't know the set, but I remember them being like, everyone, just like let the set come out and we're not gonna make changes on set release. Yeah. I, I so I think there's a BNR attached to it. I think that's when we're gonna get the the Zen bands, obviously. Um, and then maybe some some adjustments to wizard moving forward. Um, because yeah. some of these cards are absolutely nuts. Yeah. But it's nuts. Um, what about you, Teddy? What what about your week in flesh and blood? Yeah, I actually did nothing. <laughs> like, I've just been uh I've just been like prepping for Tampa kind of just like getting um you know tra like work stuff in order things like that right because i have to take off a couple of days and then we'll be heading down there um but yeah just kind of watching the spoiler season uh the skirmish season kind of passed me by unfortunately there was some ll events um thought about sleeping up chain again but they were like i had some as you've mentioned before, there's wife capital involved there, right? So it's yeah. just like uh, Tampa Bay is falls on my wife's birthday, which is <laughs> I'm hearing about it. <laughs> um, but so I had to kind of be I, I couldn't go to any skirmishes and be like, yeah, I'm going to skirmishes this weekend and then I'm going to Tampa on your birthday. Yeah, it would have been bad news for me. So yep. I just left that alone and we went out and did some stuff. Uh, over the weekend yard stuff things like that so uh, but i've been paying attention to spoilers and stuff and uh man it's like we mentioned there's some good ones there and instead of running through all of them again since we are a little bit late to the scene um i thought we would pick out two and talk about our two favorite um really cool that they're doing commons and rares 
I have to tell you, man, there was a whole day of Rune Blade spoilers. I'm just going to go first here. Um, I'm pretty excited for these commons and rares. I did not expect to be like fully rocked up over these uh, <laughs> over these spoilers, dude. Because like I didn't remind myself that they're like commons and rares, man. Like yeah, as they were dropping, I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I'm like, wait, there's a cycle of these. I'm like, oh, my God. It's 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 a common. It's a rare. I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. after that, are we diving into the the main topic then too? Yes, yes. So our main topic uh, tonight is the effect of armory decks, and um, we and just like how that's affected prices on certain cards, which will be very, which has like been very interesting to dig into. So mm-hmm. um, we'll get there in a bit. Uh, but my first card and if you follow me on twitter you know how you know how excited this card has got me uh deadwood dirge it is a it comes in a cycle it's a common um i'll just read you the red because that's the that's the one that matters so it blocks for two it's a rune blade action uh so all rune blades can play this and it says destroy an aura you control if you do create three rune chant tokens go again oh boy Dude, there is like i i could sit here for the i could burn up all the time on this episode probably like coming up with play lines for this card like this card was spellbound creepers there's like multiple ways to use it i think every room blade in the game probably sl- finds a way to slot this into their deck like no joke it's like actually insane like i can see viz playing it i think vin set plays this right off the get like this is so good for her like oh, banish yeah. banish uh yeah banish a, like a rune gate three blow up the rune chant you like the floor is literally banish yeah banish your card create a rune chant blow it up create three play a three play a two card nine <laughs> it's like you block two cards so you let's say your other two cards best say best case ontario here it blocks for six and Did then, you say best case Ontario? Oh, dude! If if the people are watching, leave a comment below if you know. If you know, you know. So have we're look, gonna have uh, zero comments on this episode. <laughs> Better yet, if you have no idea what Ted is talking about, please leave a comment below and tell Ted he's everyone, on drugs. Everyone knows about best case Ontario. <laughs> um, but so if you block for six, right? You have two, three blocks in your hand, which Vincent does block pretty well. Yeah. And then you throw a nine. That's a that's a 15 value hand. And like that cycle is really good for her. Like because you get the you three room chance. Head? Yeah, dude. Look at me. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing some I'm doing math. That's how right. good this card is is. <laughs> that's how this, like this, this card is so good. It's got Ted competitive math and over here. <laughs> dude, I'm yeah. I'm talking card value over here. We're going yeah, deep. He's talking card value. Welcome back to this week in uh <laughs> TCG Ted Pass, um, where we <laughs> dive into the numeric value of each card in the set. Uh I mean, yeah. Um yeah, dude. I'm telling no. you this. Cards a banger. So I think you're going a little overboard that everyone plays it. Aurora's not playing this card. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah. Florian. Aurora. Yeah. Probably playing this card. Zero for four there. Visrai, zero for four. Vincent. Zero for four or zero for three plus resources. Yeah. Um like just kind of a slapper all around. Um uh good card. And I think this builds too will probably start leaning into the cost reduction mechanic more. So the the more you can stack room chance to reduce the cost in these cards mm-hmm. to go wide and tall, um, it's gonna be very good. Yeah, for sure. Um, the last thing I want to mention on this card is that there are a ton of auras, not just room chance, that you can target as well. Nate, I know we've been DMing each other back and forth since this got spoiled, being like, "Yo, you can blow up a." blood box with this because you control it they give it to you so frail the assassin tokens you can blow up and so you turn a you turn a minus two damage into a plus three damage that is insane like that's so good Mm -hmm. right um you were mentioning even an eloquence token if you didn't like if you were kind of in a pinch and you needed to blow up your your eloquence token off a eulogy or something um as I mentioned with creepers, it has go again. 
So you can creeper this thing, get your action point back in certain situations as well. Just uh, I love seeing room blade cart non attacks with go again on them again. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we're oh my god, it's so nice. We're back, dude. We're so back. Um, all right, I've rambled enough about that one. My second one, my second spoiler is arcane cussing. It's a common as well. It costs one in the red says go again. When you deal, when you deal or dealt damage, destroy this. When this leaves the arena during your turn, create through three rune chant tokens straight up. Nate's probably was going to check me on this, but I thought when this got dropped, I was like, eh, it's okay. It's like it cost one. It's like, you know, the, the thing that I zeroed in on right away, Nate was that, um, you only get the rune chance if this goes away, if this, um, if this gets, goes away on your turn. So it's not like you can't just put it out there. And like, if you take damage on your opponent's turn, you create through rune chance. That's not how it's worded, but I missed a very key point of when this leaves the arena, like that's a really cool text. And I think Nate, you're going to talk a little bit about this and your favorite spoiler that started to pop up in this set where now all of a sudden Deadward Dirge can target this and it's leaving the arena because you're destroying it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, there's so many rune chants. People are going to be, oh my God. There's going to be so many little tears I mean, ruining there. everywhere. I tell you what, man, there's there's a point when rune chants get to a certain number, people start really not liking it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As mm -hmm. a rune blade main, let me tell you, when you get to like six or seven plus people start people start getting pretty annoyed because um, I made a joke on Twitter. It was like, wait, is the is that uh there was some comment about the cussing or whatever. I was like, no, no, no. That's that's the opponent's cussing <laughs> when you <laughs> when you make like six rune chants off two cards and you hit them with it. So, um, yeah, these these commons are absolutely nuts. I cannot wait to see the rest of the rune blade cards. Um, and my parting shot before I hand it over to you is that I love that these talented sets again, like Miss Fail, has uh, untalented cards built into them. And uh, kind of like, you know, it's giving tech, it's giving tech to Vincent, it's giving tech to Viscerai, it's, um, so they're not feeling left out, which is very cool. Yeah, it feels very intentional in their design um, mm -hmm. to leave a lot of this open um, so that it's not just the, the heroes in this set getting support too and you see that with the like the hero majestics that we've already had spoiled because we have mm -hmm. we have most of them uh we're missing a couple but like um basically they get three each hero gets three and the rest of the majestics are going either to generics mm -hmm. earth rune blade lightning wizard um so that it's not solely pigeonholed into their archetype and with how the set is now laid out that we see um we know that there's no like earth wizard equipment or lightning wizard equipment it's all going to be housed within either earth lightning wizard or rune blade which actually i'm looking mm -hmm. at now i'm trying to figure out i think um we could probably take an educated guess on where the the legendaries do fall yeah um, so there's definitely a rune blade legendary there's a I lightning legendary um yeah i think it's really cool that um i think misfail like i'm trying to think back like misfail did have some like the ninja stuff was Miss Fail was a little bit more siloed than this, though, even, right? The ninja cards were, like, very much tiger cards. Yes. Um, the ward cards for illusionist, or the illusionist cards were mostly ward. Yeah. Um, so I like to see it push a little bit further 
and kind of really just say, hey, like Viscerai will want to play this, um, et cetera. So. Yeah, so it looks like we do get one of each. So we get one Earth, one Lightning, one Wizard, one Runeblade, and then mm -hmm. probably one generic that piece of equipment sense. as well. Because there's two slots in front of Bruised Leather, which makes sense because there's probably one head, one arm, which is after the Bruised Leather, and then the Runaways. Um, so it's probably just a generic uh, Legendary again. Mm -hmm. So that should that should be very beneficial for um, card values because we've seen like looking at Rosetta not too like all the legendaries are ten dollars basically besides um, Traverse and whenever a legendary is siloed to a single hero it really suffers and falls into like the ten to twenty range uh, yep. depending on their playability. Um, yep. But all right, Nate, what's your two favorite spoiled cards? Sigil of Brilliance, and it's not close. Um, <laughs> I just want to figure out how to draw as many cards as possible. Um, and this card, just like all of the bounce effects, like being able to return this like either to your hand, to your deck, or just remove it just to get the draw. Um, what does this card, what is this card? I don't Sigil even Brilliant know. Brilliant says, at the beginning of your action phase, destroy this. When this leaves the arena, draw a card. So <clears throat> there are a ton of ways in Wizard and Lightning to bounce cards back to your, not bounce them back to your hand, but like bounce them off the field, kind of like on command. So um, there's a headpiece, a Flash of Brilliance, says when this defends you may discard a lightning card if you do return an aura that you control to your hand so you could like discard a lightning card and mm -hmm. bring this back to your hand draw a card um blast to oblivion uh when this attacks the next time you play an instant card this chain link you may return target aura permanent with cost one or less or target aura token to its owner's hand um and our, an aura token would cease to exist so like if you play this play an instant you can pull like you could play the sigil the sigil would then also be able to be targeted and bounce back to your hand mm -hmm. so you basically play the sigil draw a card and it comes back to your hand so you can just play it again yeah yeah it seems like they're doing this like the, the it seems like there will be a way to juggle these auras um maybe not so much in the room blade side of things right because but it's really cool that they like i like i had mentioned on cussing that it's like whenever this leaves too right it's not just um when destroyed or um uh, you know activated right it's it gives you like another line of uh play to try to um activate these auras yeah and then um a glyph over glit is a glyph overlay dm armada spoiler shout out to dm and uh my boy brody um <laughs> it's uh deal x arcane damage to target hero where x is the number of target uh permanents you control with sigil in their name and then if you shuffle if you shuffle or if you deal more than three damage with it gain uh, life shuffle all target permanents into your deck so you can shuffle your target or permanents into your deck and gain their effects along the way so um that card has like a lot of combo potential on mm -hmm. it and i'm a degenerate combo player so sign me up um yeah that's really cool like maybe a little bit of insight uh into a cilio but i feel like the wizards are kind of like well i mean like i think aurora is the most known right her like play style is very straightforward i think i think you can kind of just figure it out it's just go again lightning cards florian i'm not sure like we were talking about this before we hit record i'm not sure how much healing or like how defensive florian's gonna be um he's gonna have to be defensive somewhat to like because yes. eight cards you have to banish 12 cards out of your graveyard uh, because every time you decompose, you have to banish two earth cards and then an action card. So it's three cards every every time. Uh, yes. Yep. Four. Yeah, it's 12. 
So that's a lot of cards you have to get in there, right? You could technically just banish three Earth cards every single time. And then you would hit your nine. You would hit True. nine because you hit your threshold. Yes. Yes, you could. Yep. A little bit faster. Depends on how much Earth and, you know, whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time. I don't know. Like, I think he's, you know, we, I think we got a kind of an idea of what he's doing. But the, like, Verdance and uh, Asilio, it's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, they didn't really, like, all their power must be in their legendaries or their majestics. Because they don't seem like they're doing, like, I'm I'm here for it, but they don't seem like they're doing a whole. Well, actually, no, I, I'm wording this poorly. I don't know what they're doing yet. They're obviously going to do something. Um, I just it's interesting that we just don't really know that at all. Like, yeah, Verdant seems very much like Icelander without ice and yeah. more blocking capabilities. Like, yeah. She seems like she's going to be wanting to throw like three for sevens and the not having the ability to like chip you on your own, your own turn. Um, yeah. And that makes sense because she does come at 40 at full health, right? She's 20, 40. Yes. yes yeah. Yes. So that makes sense that she's just like heal value, you know, do the thing. Yes. I don't know, dude. I'm so excited for this weekend. I'm going to be trying to live stream my pack opening on Friday morning to try to spoil some cards. I think everyone in the building is going to be trying to do that. So, yeah, the la I don't If you if you see someone trying to do it, slap their device <laughs> out of their hand. Out of hand. <laughs> we got to no. get a spoiler the hard way, okay? Yeah, yeah. We we definitely got to We're doing I'm going to be taking way, some baby. photos. Phone's going to be out. I'm going to have extra batteries, so. Yes. Um, but yeah, if you see me in Tampa, come say hi. Um as always, I like to give out little goodies and things like that as supplies last. So, um, yeah, just come say hi. Yep. Uh, world premieres are a ton of fun and just kind of a big party, and it should be very exciting. Mm -hmm. If you see uh, Josh there, tell him hi, too. Yeah. If you see <laughs> the Josh, Josh, that guy you, you don't know. Yeah, no uh, one I've ever seen before. He opens boxes with but, me. He's like 6'4", very large human. Yeah. This is just a check to see if he's made it 20, if he's watched this video or made it 23 minutes in. So, yeah, no Josh. shot he made it 23 minutes in. <laughs> Brian's already asleep for sure. Um, uh, but okay, main topic time, Nate. Main uh, topic, 23 will... minutes in. Let's go. <laughs> 23 minutes. Yeah, it's just a brisk 23 minutes. Um, okay, so our main topic tonight is like I teased earlier, is um, the effect of armory decks. As we mentioned before, and you probably know if you're watching this, I have a TCG player store. Nate does as well. And we noticed a trend um, over the last couple months of how armory decks are affecting uh, Majestics that are straight upgrades for those decks. Yep. And it's really cool to see, actually. Um, I'm going to let you uh take a take it away here nate we can start with the well we can start with ko right off the bat right that he was the first armory deck yep. and um blood rush right yeah so um basically like looking right at blood rush it's the clearest upgrade it's the one that people yeah. complain about not being in the deck um the ko armory deck released may 3rd um at that time, Butters Bell was sitting roughly like it kind of actually hit its bottom right at that time. It was yeah. like, here's the thing: like if you if you don't know this, again, this is something that Nate and I have noticed is that there is a lot of WTR Unlimited out there, yep. and as much it feels like it's the closest thing to actually Unlimited. It's like you can't you can't buy out WTR cards. Like you just can't do it. Like no. there's just no chipping away at the mountain of cards. So Blood Rush definitely is just like, yeah, you know, it, it's suffered from that, right? Yep. So we're talking like dollar, two dollar, three dollar, you know, range. Well, it was it was about four dollars when the armory okay. deck came out. It was kind of actually like hitting right about the bottom. Yeah. And then throughout that 
see <laughs> throughout that pro quest season which is kind of funny like because that was it was released like middle of a pro quest season mm-hmm. um the card just kind of bottomed out to four dollars and then after the season right before nationals started to climb up and we're sitting today at six seven dollars um yeah so like it you can go look at the graphs like it's very clear like where the deck came out mm-hmm. and then it just kind of like whoop, it kind of like dipped off a little bit after like us nats and yeah. then um has slowly been kind of creeping up since then what's um, really sorry go ahead i was just gonna say and i think we are you, you're maybe gonna say the same thing which is really cool is that i don't think it's too much of a leap to say that like entrenched players already had three blood rushes yes um and a an entrenched player i think it's i think it's fair to assume even if you're an entrenched player and ko came out he was so good during heavy hitters yep. that you were just going to buy your three blood rushes for four bucks, five bucks. I think it, you know, might have spiked to like 10 when they announced or spoiled KO for like a second. But like I said, WTR just gets bought right back or, you know, just floods back in. Yeah. Um, so, like, and we have a number of examples too, which is really cool. Is that I think, um, you know, this is definitely like new players upgrading their decks and like actually doing a real dent to WTR. <laughs> uh inventory on tcg player which is like exciting to see yeah it's um and we'll we'll continue to see it it's it's a very interesting trend um to say the least so like we can move into like the bolton deck yeah um, so bolton came out the, next the, after- the other thing is to think like <laughs> ko there's not a whole lot of like majestics that you could put in that deck to make it it's literally just like blood rush yeah uh, that's yeah to make it better. So for like all the people out there who were like crying that blood rush was not in there, like people went out and sought the cards to upgrade it. And that's what gets people more and more committed into the game and the ecosystem. Yeah. So like, just like giving them all of the best cards in the deck, like codex of frailty and azalea. It's like, no, you don't want that. Cause then it, you basically are just making an LCG. Yeah. Because there's no reason to so like you can just hop in and out when you want, but in a smaller community, you need consistent engagement across the board. So yeah. um, like hopping over to um, our boy Bolty. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll look at like beacon of victory, like a very clear, clean cut upgrade is in competitive lists so a new player if they're like hey how what's a competitive bolton deck look like beacon of victory is gonna be in that list so that's kind of how we you know when we talked about this topic right is like okay what's the competitive list look like and then let's go look at those majestics right and bolton victory or bolton of victory beacon of victory was uh was one of those cards yeah so um funny enough Beacon of Victory, like, actually, like, doesn't exist anymore on TCG Player. Um, so the mm-hmm. Bolton deck came out around July. It was July 12th. Um, so prices then were about, let's just call it a buck fifty. Um, mm-hmm. Right now, there's one store who has zero feedback and two sales, and it's five dollars. And then you have unlimited rainbow foils next. Like the inventory just doesn't exist. Yeah, it's all first edition or rainbow foils. There's no like unlimited non foils because it's just like slowly <laughs> gotten bought out. Yeah, I had a pile of these, right? And they all sold through. Yeah, and like not, I guess not like bought out, but like they've slowly been chunked away at. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, this is definitely a card where I maybe had like, oh man, I don't know, I'd have to look it up like ten, but it wasn't like someone bought out all ten at once. It was literally like two at a time, three at a time. So it's yeah. like you know, I when that happens, right? That's a clear indicator that they're players playing the cards. Yep. Um, and then you know, like another some... card, like Celestial Cataclysm, on the day of Bolton Dex release was seven dollars, and now it's if you wanted to play set, it's. Ten dollars per card, yeah. Right, Which like, is like return to form a little bit. Back in the day, when Monarch Heroes, uh, the Light Heroes, were kind of doing their thing, um, we definitely saw that. Uh, but you know, it had kind of fallen off. Uh, but the Armory deck seems to have you know invigorated it a bit which is cool to see. Again, an older card that was like basically just left 
for dead ish. You know, five bucks isn't left for dead, but like again, it you know, no, yeah, it's good movement for a card this old, right? Yeah, which a again lot. points to player growth and the armory decks putting in some work, right? And the next one, um, what after that was Azalea. So one thing I actually just looked it up because I was wondering about uh, Soul Shield. Mm-hmm. Soul Shield is probably the perfect example of this. Like Armory deck releases, Soul Shield is sitting at eight dollars. It's now at thirteen, and it's just like you just see the graph basically right before the Armory deck releases. It starts to get kind of like you see a lot of movement, and then it just doesn't stop. And like it's yeah. it's just. Not the cleanest example. I think Beacon of Victory is probably like, I, uh, not the like, <laughs> but like Prism, yeah. the Rise of Prism has ha- like, you know, she is, she fights Zen. She is a meta, a uh, meta hero. But I mean, like you said, it, the graph <laughs> is literally popping up. So, but I mean, we have multiple cards, right? That, in, that are clear upgrades and like cheap upgrades where you're talking like, buy the deck for 40 if you're paying msrp uh mm-hmm. which typically you're not and then you spend like 20 bucks and you up you know with like beacon and oh, well no you would spend more than 20 but like under 70 bucks you have you know a, a pretty good um upgrade to your deck multiple ways um but then the next one is azalea yep and yeah the same same thing again I, i'll I'll uh, throw up the graphs um, as we talk through them as well. Just throw up little screenshots. But yeah. like you can see it again. If you look up like red in the ledger, there is one red in the deck, but like it literally goes, it's like, it's, again, it's not like, oh my God, it's it's gone up like triple the amount. No, it's gone up just a couple bucks, but like you can, you can see TCG player shows you like quantity goes up as soon as it's announced or like as soon as it's released actually not even announced so it's not even like hype pre the deck coming out right um so yeah i I think red is a good example there nate i think you looked up uh remorseless as well right uh remorseless and rain razors both had very similar effects if you look at it the (laughs) rain razors was a four dollar card um 455 and now it's like you're spending 10 bucks for per card yeah. and remorseless was re- sitting, I think around 10 and <clears throat> now to get a place that you're talking about 15. Um, so they're just like subtle little shifts and looking, uh, I actually didn't look at the red and the ledger graph before this, um, mm-hmm. but the, I think this is probably one of the most beautiful things about, the azalea one was the fact that they only put one red one barbed undertow in Mm -hmm. um in the bulk of the red in the ledger purchases actually come before the armory deck drops which kind of tells me that there's a lot of entrenched players who were like azalea curious (laughs) and then they're like all right i'll try it um because it was the week uh it was the couple of days where it was like 22 were sold like two weeks before the deck came out mm-hmm. um and then like 16 like the i think it was probably the day or two before maybe that was gen con when was gen con it was oh yeah it was a week before the actual street date so maybe so that's what you're seeing. All those sold like at Gen yeah. Con when people played the Armory decks. Yeah, maybe. I uh, mean, yeah, it's it's um, I don't know. It's really cool to see. Like, I, I think um, to kind of wrap up this thought, right? Is that personally, I think you know, I've seen some. I don't really pay attention too much, Nate, but I've seen some chatter, right? Like all these armory decks, like you said, why doesn't it have blood rush? Why doesn't, you know, why, why, you know, no AB, things like that. Um, You know, maybe even some talk of like, well, I don't really see it in my store. I'll tell you right now, my home store, like I don't, 
uh, you know, I don't see people walking in buying an armory deck, sitting down and playing. I think there's there has been a couple people, which is like super cool, but it's not like they're not beating the doors down <laughs> to get these decks, right? But like to but what this tells me is that like just maybe because you don't see it at your store, there is an overall effect here in the states, right? TCG Player is a United State, you know, U.S. based. Um, which is really cool, and I love stuff like this. I love seeing numbers and data that backs up, um, you know, the product, and to just see it is growing the game, and it's super positive. So, uh, and we talked about this a little bit before, and um, you had brought it up. Uh, what uh, Codex of Frailty? Yeah, <laughs> even Codex, dude. It, so. The that one's really, a little crazier to me, to be honest. The weekend that the Armory deck released, 30 copies sold. That's nuts, dude. <laughs> Over the That's... last three months, the, mo- the most that have sold in a uh, three-day span like that is 19. Yeah, yeah. It's that like... tells you all you need to know about like yeah. how these Armory decks are effect- affecting the market. Because like, yeah, it, especially with a card like Codex of Frailty, like... Yeah, if a new it, player, if a new player buys a place out of that, dude, they're entrenched now. They're playing. Yeah. They're playing flesh and blood. <laughs> you play it. Um, yeah. But that's like I don't think people from like Magic like they buy this Armory deck and then they're like, "Oh man, I have to spend seventy dollars on a card. I've never seen a seventy dollar card before in my life." Like, yeah. Once you've played TCGs, you understand like, yeah, cardboard has value. It's okay to spend money on cardboard because when you sell or change um, your deck, you can just sell it or trade it or do something and get some of your money back. And we're nerds. We don't like have $200 yeah. bar tabs. Yeah, that's I mean, true. Some of you degenerates might, some, but someday, yeah. that's between you and Jesus. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And that's just like, <laughs> you know, another thing, <laughs> another thing I thought of Nate is that like, you know, you can't even say it's like, well, it's, you know, it's the, the players going out getting the uh, the armor, right? The KO deck had that sweet chess piece, Savage Sash, and um, Azalea had some new pieces, right? Because, like, I, I just thought about it. M- me, myself, I go out and bought the deck to get those pieces. I ain't buying two more Red in the Ledgers, right? I'm not buying Codex of Frailties. Yeah. You're not doing it. Um, so I just think it's a, it's fun to like i was really excited to do this because i think it points to just natural growth and um yeah just like more armory decks the better and i love that they're like pumping these things out right we got uh dash coming up and then we got a brand new hero before the end of the year and then we got two more in quarter one next year i think or maybe two more before mid-year for sure i don't remember the timing on that yeah. Also, they've like, like you mentioned, they doing the LSS thing again. Like, we're seeing the progression of the Armory deck design change. Yeah. Like, Azalea had like a one in 20 purple variant chess piece, which is like, dude, that's so cool that they're like, hey, little, didn't tell anybody. Just was like, oh, you found it. That's cool. Like, surprise. That's fun um also instead of giving play sets of everything like play sets of lumina ascension you know all that they gave you one red so that you play it and you're like this is cool i want two more of these in my deck yeah. um so i'm excited to see how they keep adjusting and tweaking the next armory decks yeah it'll be i mean dash is the next one it'll be interesting to see how they take that um and what they end up like Dude. reprinting um and how many they put in yeah right like i don't I'm know ex- that's be an interesting one yeah i'm dude i'm excited to see how they bring a whole new hero into the game like oh that's because that's supposed to be the last one <gasps> last one this year dude brand new hero. it has to be someone with an already existing card pool but then if you yeah. design like a 60 card deck around an already existing card pool that is just infused with new cards. That's just like, oh. Yeah. 
it's definitely going to be a, a card pool that's existing there. You know, I, I would expect the commons and rares to not be like 16, you know what I mean? Like 40 new commons and rares. Cause that would just be like, Oh, well, unless it's like completely class locked or hero locked. Oh my God. It would have to be talented locked. Dude, that would be I, wild. They could just bring, like they could do commons and rares too. Like, they they're three like all the commons and rares are three ofs. All the cards that they're releasing as new are three ofs. So it's not like some like oh I'm a ninja yeah, but boy. It's just... I we got our brand new ninja dude. It's like oh no, I got to buy three of these stupid armory decks to get my place out of this brand no, new cards. Yeah. Like the brand new you cards are gonna come yeah. place that. Yeah, it's just it would feel like I don't know. I guess I said it because I, it would feel hard to balance like just infusing like 60 new cards into the game right but i mean i don't know we'll see i i'm excited to see how they handle that right the, like couple maybe some new majestics and things locked to that hero be fun uh so i'm here for it i am excited for armory decks i think they are a, a big success as we've just pointed out with multiple examples um of they actually moving the market, which is awesome in yeah. a way that points to brand new heroes. Did I, did I mention that? I think it might be the like sixth time. Brand new players, you mean? <laughs> yes, brand new players. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it does it does point to new player growth and continued growth while, again, not everyone might not see it. But like, I know that like from even people on the team that I've talked to, like they're seeing new players at their locals. There's some people who are like, yep, I have no one at my locals. Um, but it, everyone's going to see different, uh, different results. So, um, yeah. I'm excited. It's awesome. Can't wait to see who the new uh, hero is. Can't wait to see the rest of the Dash IO deck too. Yeah, dude. Some of those cards that they've spoiled already are pretty spicy. Ted, you know I like to draw cards. Yeah, I was just going to mention I'm like, dude, drawing cards. Oh boy. Like, yep. I think that's pretty good in Dash IO. <laughs> like, yes, is. get a couple of looks at the top of your deck, get a couple extra cards in your hand. Oh, man. There's also some, like, max tech in there that they've already. Oh, my God. I've, I re, I re sleeve max <laughs> waiting for the new room blades, but we're here. So, I don't know. Max is a fun deck. I just, uh, I'll play him once in a while. Yes. All right. We're, we're rambling, Nate. Uh, all right. Let's uh let's wrap this thing up. Great. We're at eleven hundred and seventy-two subs right now. We're trying to get to twelve hundred for a celebration. What it is, don't know. But if you click the button, <laughs> we'll find there? out together. That's my promise to you. So like, subscribe, hit the notification button, do all those things. And as always. Put your money where your mouth is. Boop, boop, boop. Peace, everybody. Peace.